Today I'm taking on Pokemon Infinite Fusion once again, but with only Wonder Traded Pokemon. Strap in because we'll be seeing some of the coolest cool, designs Joker. out there, but also some of the worst ones, of course. Besides that, I'll be running through the Johto region of this game, last time with the Kanto region, but don't worry, you don't have to watch that video to understand this one at all. I've heard that 70% of you guys isn't subscribed, so let's get that down to 69. Let's also try to smash 5 likes on this video, and with all of that out of the way, let's straight our way through Pokemon Infinite Fusion. So we start off our game in Golden Rod City, since that's where we left off last time, and I immediately head into the Pokemon Center to do my first couple of trades. I have a couple of rules for this challenge though. I can't just do as many trades as I want. Before the first gym, I'll allow myself to do 3 Wonder Trades, and then after every gym batch you get, you get a couple of premium Wonder Trade tickets, so I'll be using those to further build my teams. But if I get a Pokemon that isn't compatible with each other, I'll be allowed to trade that away again for something new. That's about it, so let's jump right into my first trade, which was a Mamoswine Rhyperior Fusion, a very strong team member with the solid rock ability, so super effective moves won't be as good against them. Secondly, I got an Ivysaur Gloom Fusion, which I immediately turned into a Bellsaur, making Venusaur just a teeny tiny bit more beautiful. And the last fusion I got was Crobok. Once we get to the end of the video, please let me know what your favorite fusion of the day was, because I guarantee you, you'll be seeing some absolute beauties. Now to head to my first gym badge in this region, led by Whitney. Her gym puzzle also got a complete overhaul, this time you have to count the Pokemon that walk across the screen and if you get it right you get the pass, but if you get it wrong you need to fight a trainer. Since I have no idea how to count, I got every single one wrong, but ultimately still reached Whitney and her normal types. I lit off with Emily against her Licky Bull, so I Swords danced up and killed it with an Earthquake. Duncan also stood no chance like the next Pokemon gear return. Iros looked a little bit cursed so I just took it out immediately and her ace, Chantank was actually very bulky and survived an earthquake but then still went down to a brick break after. No rollout sweep for Whitney this time. We get our first gym badge and our first set of premium wonder trade tickets, so let's put them to use. First off is the one and only Sea Champ, probably the most cursed fusion I got in this run, but it's still pretty strong though. Secondly was a Nidoran Darkrai fusion, which I can't wait to evolve, but before I do so, with our last straight which turned into a Pinaco Baneri fusion and I really didn't want to get any low pony fusions because I didn't explore the city a little bit and in the underground I found Yusin who wanted to trade a legendary Pokemon with me, namely a Mewtwo. But I didn't trust him because he didn't even manage to capture Suicune, why would he have a Mewtwo, so I just left him alone. I made my way through Ilex Forest into Azalea Town and talked to Kurt. It turns out that he's actually the gym leader because of this game is set 3 years before the events of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Which means the Johto region has actually changed quite a lot from your regular viewpoint. Right now, the entire town is flooded and Kurt can't take your gym challenge until we manage to fix it up. The Slowpoke well for some reason doesn't drain water anymore, so the Slowpokes are all over town. And the details here are crazy, even the Pokemon Center has water in it. So let's go and find the cause of this, shall we? We once again find Yusin standing around and he says that he has nothing to do with this, but after confronting him for a second time, he gets really hostile and attacks me in a Pokemon battle. He then sends out his supposed Mewtwo, which is just a Meowth and Ditto fusion. So I'm actually really glad that I didn't do the trade. After taking him out, he explains to me that he's the one that stuffed the entire well with shelters so that the well would flood and the entire town would be inoperable. So we go back to Kerr to explain everything and he gives me the HM for dive so that we can get into the well ourselves. The puzzle he had to complete here was actually pretty cool, you have to move slowpokes with your strength HM towards the shelters and once your slowpoke reaches the shelter, they turn into a slowbro and they fly off. Once you're done doing all four, the well will drain all of its water and all the problems will be gone. You leave the well, Kurt thanks you and also wants you to battle him at his gym, so that's where we're headed next. But in the gym, my Dark Ran ultimately evolved into a Dark King, a super strong Dark Ground type that's probably not going to be as useful against Kurt's bug types. We complete the gym puzzle, which was just talking to some spider webs in the right order to clear your path, so let's take on Kurt. He starts off with a Beatos against my Roomba. After using a couple of Psychics, I do come out on top in this matchup, but it also managed to hit me with a couple of Twin Needles, which poisoned me, and he would then keep using full restores, so I didn't come out of this fight with a lot of HP left. 
For his next Pokemon, Forrester, I swapped out into Mama, but I totally forgot I was a pure grass type, so a bug bite took me down. I then swapped in Elemily, used an earthquake, set up a swords dance, and then he exploded. His Vandra came out and was way too fast for me, so a Dragon Pulse once again took me out. I then swap in Mech and go for two Acrobatics to squash that bug. His Slow Zor also went down this way, and his last Pokemon was a Chansey Shuckle Fusion. It was super bulky, but it really didn't hit hard at all, so with just a single cross chop, the one and only could finish this battle. Two gym badges in my pocket, so let's do some more wonder trading. First off, I got a Vaporeon Mew Fusion, which looked questionable, and then a Genelope. So cool, I can't wait to evolve this. And believe it or not, but our last trade actually gave us God. Cornflake the Bew. I went back to Kurt's house and he gave me four really cool looking balls. Each of these can apply a status condition to the Pokemon that you're trying to catch. So for example, if the Pokemon decides to break out of your ball, it will not be burned, paralyzed, frozen, or asleep. A super cool invention and I totally wish these were real. I then did an evolution into Genelope and eventually into Genolian. I didn't think they could make Empoleon any cooler, but hey, this is just absolute beauty. Sadly enough, after evolving Cornflake again, it wasn't compatible anymore, so we're going to have to trade him away. There goes our god already. Pinani just looks like something I don't want to be reminded of. After running through the routes, I eventually reach Violet City and run into Yusin again. He tells me to leave him alone because he has some important business at the ruins of Alf. All cool and dandy, but we'll check that out later. First, I go to the trainer school and talk to this student. He just talks in dots, and since this is three years before the events of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, could this be? Nah, it couldn't be. With that conspiracy out of the way, let's head to the Sprout Tower. But this Sprout Tower is very different. It's full of monks that will send you back to the beginning of the tower if they spot you. And the higher you get in the tower, the weirder it gets. Eventually, you get ambushed by bell sprouts, and at the top, you have to do a victory bell parkour. But your reward for all of this are the Golbat boots, which are needed to jump over certain gaps later in the game, so definitely make sure you pick these up. We then head to the rooms of Alf, and down in the basement, we find a Raikoon. So this is the thing you've seen has been after. But down here, there is also a painting of Dialga and Palkia. Is this foreshadowing to something bigger? We'll have to wait and see. First, let's talk to you seen because he explains to me that he's the one that fused Raikou and Suicune together. This is also the reason why he made the Slowpoke well over Flood, so that it would attract Suicune so that he could try to capture it. He tells me he's now done with all of that and he's going to go back to Cherry Grove City, and if we manage to find any of the legendary dogs or birds, we can bring them to him to fuse them all together. I traded away that Mew Bibarel fusion to get Dido's, a very cool looking boy, but I don't know if he's going to be compatible in the end. I go through the dark cave and blow up a rock with some dynamite together with a cop. This led me to Blackthorn City, normally the last town you'd visit in the Johto region, but Red's journey is totally different. I want to check out the Dragon's Den immediately, but it's been totally altered. This time you have to get through a random, like, maze of whirlpools. This definitely got on my nerves a little bit because it took me like 10 minutes to get through, and the reward for this was a gibble, so definitely not worth it. I then evolved Absinthe into the Fortress Lopunny Fusion that wasn't compatible, so I traded it away for an Azumarill Rampardo Fusion that actually didn't look all that bad. Sadly enough, it doesn't get the pure power ability, otherwise it will be pretty damn overpowered. I then enter Claire's gym, so let's hope she gives me the gym badge once we're done. She started out with a Ferrados, and I let off with Mama because it's a pure water type, I just used Petal Dance three times in a row while she kept using Forest Stores, but eventually she did take me down with a Crunch and a Fire Fang. I swapped that into Mech, took it down with Acrobatics, and then faced her Gladra. Some Gunk Shots and Acrobatics later, and we still managed to come out on top here, but her next Pokemon Donair would totally crush my confidence with a Magnitude. I then brought in Roomba, used a 4 times super effective Blizzard, and Donair was down. For Ariazard, I swapped into Weasley, but two Outrageous took me down, and I was only able to hit one Aqua Jet. My newest addition, Polyp, had smashed his way through Ariazard, but her ace Pokemon, Gardactyl, who looked a little bit like an abomination, was too much for me. I Blizzard did again with Roomba, and that was that. Claire defeated, and she actually gave me the gym badge this time. Before doing all of my wonder trades again, I first went to the next route. The Icy Cave is totally gone, and this time you actually need to go through a snowy route. I used my Golbat boots for the first time to jump over this gap, found a mysterious circle on 
on the ground that ended up doing absolutely nothing. After harassing some of the local wildlife, I finally did my wonder trades. This way I got a really sick looking cotton dar. Its evolution looked even cooler, but then once I evolved it into its final form, it suddenly wasn't compatible anymore. Really sad because this thing had a ton of potential. Smearquil on the other hand looked really cute, and Smearlosion turned into the perfect counterpart of Bob Ross. I also got Mudrill as my very first Swampert fusion, but once I evolved it into its final form, yeah, it didn't really work out no more. So instead I got a really cool Growlithe Ivysaur fusion and turned it into an Arcasaur, the best boy of all time. My second to last fusion was Terror and it definitely strikes terror and fear into anybody that faces it. This went away a little bit when I turned it into a Landler, but it still looked pretty okay. And the last fusion I got was ah, He just looks so goofy, man. I then went back to Violet City because I totally forgot to challenge Morty, but First I found a house with Giovanni and Silver in it, and for once Giovanni doesn't seem like he's up to anything bad. So we leave him alone and head straight to Faulkner. He had the worst gym design ever. It's kind of like Skyla's gym design, but on steroids. So you can imagine how glad I was when I finally reached him, so let's teach him a lesson for this torture. First matchup, Xiao versus Roomba. He starts off with some full restore spamming after getting him down into red hell with Blizzard multiple times. This is also eventually his downfall as a psychic takes him down. I vomited away his Crankrow with Meg's Gunk Shot. His Scar Doom had one of the cleanest designs yet, but after taking a superpower from Polyp, he swapped out into Marrow Kiss. I went into Rayquaza, I know that's not a Rayquaza at all, whittled it down with some pedal dances, then switching out into Emily to Mega Hornet so that he would send out Scar Doom again. One more Brick Break, one more kill, and the final Pokemon was Ursa Jot. Mix once again on cleanup duty with Gunk Shots. That's Faulkner defeated, we're halfway there with the gym badges, but that also means more wonder trading, baby. First I had a Croconaw Ralt Fusion, and I'm just hoping this doesn't turn into anything sexy. Luckily, it didn't, at least for me if you find this appealing in any way please go see a doctor i got a ruffle the bulba muku which of course wasn't compatible with venusaur so i traded it away for domingo the drow ring that was honestly nothing special and got even worse when it evolved i wouldn't like this thing to follow me around in the forest like that little girl in the sevi islands Fatal the Milk Hank was surprisingly very nice. I would just not like to drink its Moomoo milk though. The last thing I got was a Groval Togepi fusion and I absolutely love the colors on this thing. And its final evolution Togetile made this even more apparent. I love the blue and the red man. But anyway, let's go to Price's Gym, which is probably my favorite in the entire game. You have to move around a ball around the ice hockey field and eventually score a goal in order to get to him. This was so creative and amazing, and this made fighting him even more exciting. He started out with a Dew King. No, not the guy from Pokemon XD. The Dewgong Sloking Fusion, of course. I first put it to sleep with Shazam and then swapped out into Polyp to just one-shot it with Head Smash. His Infern Vial was a little bit too much for me, and then I had the worst look of all time. I swapped into Rayquaza, missed two Sleep Powders in a row. By this time, I was almost down already, so I went for a Heat Wave, got it down into Red Health, but he used the full restore, and as I try to use another heat wave, I miss again. So yeah, that's Rayquaza down. It's his own fault. Should have just hit more moves. So I went into the one and only, and a single waterfall finished it off. Jin Lord is something I really didn't have to see. So I went into Fatal, I went for the Fake Out and Double Sucker Punch combo, but a Blizzard ultimately took down my cowboy. I then swapped in Shazam, set up some Call Mines, and a couple of Moon Blasts later, and the Curse thing is finally off the screen. Proposter had a pretty sus name, so I put him to sleep, set up one more Call Mind, and took him down with a Psychic, and Mamodon was the last thing on the list. Once again, I put it to sleep, it took me three Psychics to take down, but a prize finally hands me the win. Three more gym badges to go. Boom, more wonder trades. First, Lead Wag, which I eventually evolved into Lead Toad. While it's not the coolest thing out there, it definitely is a really nice design. And I kind of feel like this could be an actual Pokemon. The next one was Nine Swine, another Mammoth Swine fusion, and then I had Fletch Yard, something that I thought had a ton of potential. This was only emphasized more when it turned into a Ponyard Talonflame fusion, but once I turned it into a Bisharp Talonflame fusion, 
it just didn't work anymore for some reason. Really sad to see, but hey, we have to move on. We get something way cooler in the place anyway. Coughing the Galvan Picks. And when I evolved it again, it turned into something that could come straight out of like Naruto or something, I think. I honestly feel like Ninetales has a ton of potentials to fuse with anything just because of the nine tails. I then got my first Quagsire fusion and I honestly didn't think it was going to work out with a Fero, but it turned out pretty goofy and I kind of like it. There's just nothing going on inside his head. The last fusion I got was Vapor and War, something I don't really want to use to be completely honest with you. Then I went to check out the Lake of Rage and Colrus was standing there next to an icy rock. He explains to me that there is a ton of energy coming from it, but he does not know how to get it open. Once again, a side quest that we're not going to be bothered with too much, let's check out the Red Gyarados. And it actually doesn't make sense that there is a Red Gyarados here because Team Rocket hasn't done all of its schemes yet. But once you talk to it, you just realize that it's a total troll because it's a Magikarp Gyarados fusion. Shortly after, I take the road to Cherry Grove City and enter the Kimono Girls building. After you beat all of them in a battle, Alder, the Unova champion, comes up to you and recognizes you as the Kanto champion and decides to give you the black and white stone for Reshiram and Zekrom. You could go and capture them at the bell tower, but since I just have to trade them away anyway, I decided to just leave it for now. Instead, I went to the burn tower where Morty was standing on a platform that was literally about to fall down. So I went a couple floors up and joined him up there. He was so impressed with my parkour skills that he went back to his gym and told me to come too. His gym was also one of a kind. You have to walk on these skulls and they switch every few seconds, so you have to remember which path to take. Not the hardest gym puzzle, so reaching him was definitely a piece of cake. Because something happened with my recording, I wasn't able to record most of the battle, but I'll tell you which Pokemon he had by going through an attempt that I lost. He had an Hitmonmoir, Snorslash, which was by far the bulkiest and best member on his team, a Genrorg, which was also a menace to deal with, and a Wee Ninja that only had one weakness because of Wonder Guard, and that was Fairy, and I barely had any Fairy type moves, so I had to take it down with Hypnosis and Bad Dreams from my Dark King. And his ace was a Cleftoon, one of the most menacing things that I've ever seen, but it still didn't have any chance against my coughing. So with that gym badge, I wanted to head to the next couple of towns, but I found out that they are not there. So for a brief moment, I had no idea where to challenge Chuck or Jasmine. But after doing some research, you have to go through the Sevi Islands in order to find them. So that's where we're headed next. First, we do a couple more wonder traits, starting out with a Roselia Scissor Fusion, which I immediately evolve and it turns into a Rose Zor. And this is by far my favorite fusion that I've done so far out of both of my videos. This thing looks so good and it's not leaving my team anymore. Next was Dark Arp, which already looked amazing. Honestly, every Dark Arp fusion looks amazing, but it only got better when it turned into Dark Dose. And the last thing I got was a Dew Vesta and its final evolution. A Girona was honestly a little bit underwhelming. Two more fusions to go, starting off with a Pichu Azuril fusion that eventually turned into Ryril, which looks a little bit off with the proportions. I would give this like a 6 out of 10. And the last fusion for now was a Weefion that looked like absolute trash, but Bidrion was actually pretty nice. So while I was in the Sevi Islands, a ton of locations were blocked off by Corsolas, but I did find a shipwreck which I entered and I could cross it because of my Golbat boots. This led me to that one forest with the Hypno from Fire Red and Leaf Green, but this time, there is actually six children you have to find and save. After doing so and bringing them all back to the campsite, you start to do a head count, but there's one head too much. This turned out to be a Zoroark. So you beat it up, everybody thanks you, and you can go back home. And as a reward, you get the Marini doll, which you can use to scare off the Corsolas. So now we get access to way more areas. The first one is a Team Rocket warehouse, but as it turns out, Team Plasma is here as well, and it seems like they've been doing business with Team Rocket. After confronting them about it, Team Rocket doesn't even seem to know that you Giovanni has stepped down and Team Rocket has disbanded. After you explain it to them, every single Team Rocket member in here leaves, never to be seen again. We do follow Team Plasma for a bit, but they run off with a boat and we never get to see them again or at least I couldn't find them anymore. So instead, I finally found Jasmine on this island as well and challenged her to a battle. She started out with Scardrio, so I lead off with my newly acquired Macarena, but immediately swap out into Chun-Li and set up two quiver dances and proceed to take out Scardrio with a heat wave. 
The next Pokemon Aglex also melted down, is what I thought, until he hung on with his sturdy and killed me with an earthquake. So I tried to take it out with Armstrong's Hydro Pumps, but this also didn't work out too well. I wasn't doing enough damage, and every time I did damage, she would just heal up with full restores. Kenny, on the other hand, was strong enough with a Hydro Pump and a Crunch. The Aglex destruction finally ended. Her Sky Sharp was pretty cool and finished me off with X Scissor. So after that, I had to swap into Fashion. I hit three earthquakes in a row, and Sky Sharp was no more. Metadon was up next, another earthquake, didn't even do half, and I got taken out by Stone Edge. I then tried to take it out with two more Giga Drains from Macarena, but it also didn't even do that much, and another Stone Edge took me out again. My last hope was Penny. One more Leaf Blade, Metadon was down, and then I got pretty damn lucky, because our last Pokemon was Magnetoise, and he couldn't do enough damage against me with Hydro Cannon, so Leaf Blades once again finished the battle. She gave me my 7 Gym Badge, but no premium wonder trading tickets so I guess I'll be spending some of my own money on them I got one of the most awesome gambling machine fusions Meowth combined with Rodom but after evolving yeah they just totally ruined it I got a Pokemon that you never ever want to encounter in Tentado Gino the Megalax besides the name it really isn't all that cool I also got a very good special attacker in Glagius and what happens when you combine two exploding bombs you get Ferrari Two more wonder traits to go, the next one was Gas Dactyl, a very menacing looking Pokemon, but once I evolved him into its final form, he turned into Ridley. At least, I think that's what it's supposed to resemble. And the last Pokemon is kinda cursed again, Victory Swine. It kinda just looks like a Mammoth Swine that's being eaten by a Victory Bell. But shortly after, I immediately found Chuck already on another island. No rest for the wicked, uh, let's get this battle done too. I put my new team member to good use, starting out with Peppy against his Kabuchamp. Besides looking like a monster from One Punch Man, it did go down pretty smoothly with a nasty plot and a Psyshock combo. The next Pokemon Lucagon went down to a single Psyshock, Blazenape looked absolutely awesome, and Blaze kicked Peppy out of here. I sent out Ridley, went for a single fly, and Blazenape was no more. Polyape was stupid, and his death was the same as the last one with a fly, and last up was Hitmonlax. He definitely needs to hit the gym more, which made him an easy target for a fly and an iron head. Last gym badge acquired, and as a reward, we get the gym badge, but also a ticket to Naval Rock. But before we head over there, I go back to my hometown in Pallet, and upon entering the professor's lab, we see our rival, but also Cynthia, talking to him. A mysterious discovery at Mount Silver has been made. As it turns out, a Pokemon resides there that manipulates time, space, and distorts everything around it. And since Blue is a former champion, and us two are champions as well, we are the ones that have to go and investigate it. But once again, before going there, I do head to Naval Rock, and the path to the top was very hard because you have to dodge all of these birds that are flying at your face. But reaching the end was definitely worth it, because I got to see the beautiful Hogia in all its beauty. It looks super cool, but I do prefer Ho-Oh and Lugia separately though. After capturing it, I reversed fused it because I totally forgot you could do that. And I have to say, this one doesn't look as good as the red one but let me know which one you prefer in the comments down below. Before we head to Mount Silver, do our last couple of wonder trades. Six more to go. First one, Spirizing. Something I never used, but still look decent. Then Kexor. I have more than enough Venusaur fusions, so this guy will be staying in the box as well. Delican might look like Santa, but still not really my type of design. I guess I'll be getting cold next Christmas. Ambithorn is something that will haunt my dream for years to come. Togeslash look good too, but I already have an amazing Togekiss fusion. And the last fusion I got on this journey was Zwinair. I decided to evolve it once more, which didn't make it compatible anymore, and this is when I started to use my DNA reverses. This gave me a Drogoigon, which is so cool, and I decided to add this to my final team. The next thing I reversed was my Mew Vaporeon fusion, that turned into the cutest thing ever, so I added it to the team as well. The only other reverse fusion I didn't add it to the team was Vita 9, because from turning to the best boy to the coolest dog I've ever seen is definitely an upgrade. Before going to Mount Silver, there was only one place left for me to explore and that was New Bark Town, so I went to Professor Elm, he didn't really have that much to say except for giving me a starter and the location of Mewtwo, but then I went to Gold's house, and his mother tells me 
that her son is now at the trainer school, which means that what I said earlier about that guy being gold is actually true. And I absolutely love that, but it's time for us to head on over to Mount Silver. We meet up with Cynthia and Bakugo on Victory Road and talk over our game plan, which is basically just go in there and try to fight it. Instead though, after going through Mount Silver, I first run into Bakugo and he's like, we should battle instead to see how strong we've become. And I'm like, Okay, he's definitely buffed up his team from the last time we fought as he starts out with a level 69 Architare. Luckily, Batman comes in clutch with some roosts and surfs to win this matchup. He does still have his crow jot, so I try to take it down with a dragon pulse and a hurricane, but it doesn't quite work out because it's just too fast for me and an air slash takes me down. Sweaty Psychic does take it out, I never noticed this guy was named Sweaty, and his blast sar took like four psychics, so it's definitely not just its appearance that's menacing. I still came out on top, and his Miss Magazam was getting ready to sweep me as he set up two two Calm Minds before taking me out with a Psychic. Luckily I still had Ridley in the back, with the Shadow Ball Miss Makazam still goes down since it's 4 times super effective. His last Pokemon was an Aegidactyl and with a couple of waterfalls from Weasley, Bakugo is no more. He then admits that I am indeed the chosen trainer, so I should be the one to go up and capture this Pokemon. He gives me the Rock Climb HM and sends me upstairs. After going all the way up there, we see Cynthia in a panic. She tells me that this thing is unlike anything we've ever seen before. It's able to snap you away in an instant. Even she couldn't beat it in a Pokemon battle. So she also can't allow me to go and challenge it because it would put my life in danger and tries to stop me by challenging me to a battle too. And well, her team's pretty stacked, starting out with a Poratomb that has download so it's immediately buffed up. Luckily, Batman is once again able to come out on top with three Dragon Pulses. For Togeseon, I have to get out of here because it's my natural kryptonite. I mean, a nice fairy type? No thanks. Instead, I swap in Rayquaza, put it to sleep with Sleep Powder, and put a Leech Seed on it. Two Heat Waves later, and it's down already with me still having full HP. Rose Zor was super cool to see, a Gliscor Rose Raid Fusion, so I swapped out into Batman to sack it so I could get a free switch in. This allowed me to go into Ridley, and with two more flies, Rose Zor went down. It did hit like a truck because an Aerial Ace almost one-shot me despite it only being 60 power. I thought I had the perfect counter for Miluion. I swapped in Macarena, went for the Giga Drain, did a decent amount of damage, but she decides to use Mirror Code and just take me out in one hit. Luckily, I brought in Rayquaza, pedal danced it, and that was the end. And her last Pokemon was a Vaporeon Garchomp Fusion, a groundwater type. Why does everything need to be fused with Vaporeon? Anyway, since I'm four times super effective, two paddle dances took it out, and that's Cynthia defeated. She acknowledges that we're stronger than her and allows me to go up to the Pokemon. But upon stepping over there, my body started to feel very weak. And the closer I got, the slower I became. I saw a white light and thought that I was dead. But no, it had teleported me three years into the future, on the top of Mount Silver. And that boy from the trainer school we met three years ago? He's here now, ready to challenge me. It's me versus Gold in the final battle. His first Pokemon was a little bit underwhelming, a Sudokal. I just hit it with a single surf and he already redrew it for his Togirian. Once again a fairy type, as well as a dark type. So I brought in Rayquaza, took a Moonblast to the face, do the Sleep Hour Leech Sheet thing and hit it with some Heat Waves. But it was too bulky and it kept on healing up with Moonlight. So eventually I swapped out into Macarena, allowing me to set up a single Swords Dance, hit a Iron Head and take it down. He brings in his Typhcune and even though it looks really menacing, I kept my cool. It destroyed me with a flamethrower, but I brought in Sweaty and set up some quiver dances. After setting up three, I was confident that I could one-shot it, so I went for Psychic and Typhcune was down and out. Dragados might have been super menacing too, but another Psychic, another kill. Feriku drove me into a corner with Thunder because I kept on paralyzing myself and eventually I had to get out of there, otherwise Sweaty was dead. So I brought in Batman, Dragon Pulsed it and took it down. The Dockle was there again, but my Surf finished it off. One more Pokemon to go, Mega Tai, which was definitely the worst out of the three legendary beast fusions. Even though my Hurricane was super effective, it's not reliable, and I missed my second one so he could take me out with two Fire Blasts. Then I went into Weasley, went for the Techno Blast, didn't take it out, tanked a Fire Blast, and finished this battle with one last Aqua Jet. After the battle, we get transported back three years into the past, 
and we wake up in our room. Upon going downstairs, we meet up with our mom and she explains everything to me. I've been gone for days and they all thought that we were lost. Cynthia even went back to her home region because she had some duties to attend to. But there is one more thing that remains. That Pokemon is still on the top of Mount Silver. So I put on my climbing boots and went back. With fear going throughout my entire body, I walked up to it. The same thing happened as last time, but this time I could actually go up to the Pokemon without getting teleported and challenge it to a battle just to find out that it was Paldiatina, the fusion of the three Sinnoh legendaries. This explains everything from the time distortion, space distortion, and it looks super cool on top of that. They easily took down Batman after I hit a hurricane with a spatial rend. I then brought in Rayquaza and somehow tanked the move from all three of them and hit them with a heat wave, bringing two of them down into very low HP. Then I went into Sweaty and took down the Giratina form with Psychic. They weren't doing as much damage anymore and the Dialga form went down shortly after. With only the Palkia form still standing, they were not strong enough to take me down and three more Psychics won me the battle. The legendary Pokemon vanishes into thin air only leaving behind a portal which always takes you to three years in the future. And that's the end of Pokemon Infinite Fusion. I had so much fun playing this game. It really lives up to the name, Infinite Fusion. You can play this game an infinite amount of times with an infinite number of teams. I don't think I'll ever get bored of it. So if you want to see more playthroughs of this game, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I want to finish off by thanking my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo. And I'll see you guys next time.